Hey, so Karen sent me these really interesting measurements of these speakers. And I don't have any experience with these speakers. Let's see, they are uh, Ohm TRS-212 and TH-18XOC. So I might not be able to say anything about this because I don't have any experience with these speakers, but maybe if I just talk about how I look at the data on these graphs a little bit, that will help you take the next step into finding you know, uh, an alignment that works well for you. Um, so let me tell you about just some of the first things that I noticed when I opened this up. Um, right away, I, I'm, I'm starting to wonder, like, is this maybe not a symmetrical crossover? Now, I know you told me that um, your filters are symmetrical, and you say that you have um, 24 dB per octave Butterworth filters at 125 hertz. But just because the filters are symmetrical electronically doesn't mean that the result necessarily will be, and that's all we really care about. So as you are um, optimizing this crossover relationship, I'm gonna recommend that you um, play around with your different uh, crossover settings, your topologies and polarity and delay and things like that while you're actually measuring the speaker. And the reason that I say that is that um, it looks to me like, let me draw a little line here. Um, we've got a nice gentle slope here. I don't know, gentle. Uh, but it just looks to me like these slopes maybe match, but then you get into this place and it goes boom, it takes a dive here. So that makes me kind of nervous because I'm thinking that's oh, gonna make it a little bit harder to create a crossover that's aligned all the way through here. Um, so my first idea for how this could be improved would be to use different filters from the beginning. You may end up using asymmetrical filters electronically to get a symmetrical result. I don't know exactly what those are. Um, we can take a look at that, but I would need you to measure the speakers without any crossover filters on them so that we can just look at the native response and then talk about that. Now I did try to subtract these filters. At first I thought, oh, I can just subtract the filters that Kieran put on there. And um, I'll just show you real quick because it's kind of funny. Over here, uh, I tried to create an inverse response. So let's look at this. Um, and so this would this is me trying to create the response of your subwoofer with without that filter on it. Kind of impossible to do as far as I know, but anyway. I attempted that, it didn't really work out. Uh, so back over here in Smart, yeah, so, so, so if we just look at this relationship though, one of my first ideas is, man, if I could just bring this down, maybe 6 dB, then um, maybe then I can shift that crossover region from instead of like being up here and having to deal with this stuff, Maybe if I move it down a little bit, maybe I'll have less problems with this asymmetrical relationship here, but maybe not. Um, okay, so in terms of creating the alignment, you had a couple of questions. You were wondering, can this be done with less delay because you found an alignment already that is adding 7.60 milliseconds of delay to the top. Looks great. As you can see, we have that little problem here, you know, where this gets gets really steep, um, but otherwise, that's working for you, and that's fine. So you are wondering, can it be done with less delay? And number two, um, can you have an improved alignment here? Okay, um, let's look at a couple of things. So let's shift to looking at the phase unwrapped, because I wanna check something out. So unwrap phase, and I'll try to give myself as much. Um, I have created a little preset here that is super zoomed in, but I think is gonna help us look at this. So I've got the phase unwrapped, and I'm only looking at information in the crossover region from about 110 to 195. 110, 195. This is where we're gonna see the most interaction. And I can see right away that the slopes don't match, right? Um, and I would like to investigate that a little further. So I open up P 
pixel stick and I'll draw a line um, just kind of trying to find the slope of this line. And I look down here and I can see that it's about four degrees. Um, and now if I move this line down here and try to put it on top and let's get this all on the screen. Um, I can see that it, it doesn't match, right? But now I'm kind of wondering like how much doesn't it match? And I don't know much about filters, but um, I have seen this trend that as you add each order of filter, or, or I guess I should just say, I look for this pattern of changes, phase shift of 45 degrees, right? So it can be helpful for me to make a little visual aid that includes some of that. So I'm gonna make an arc, uh, a little arrow here that is 180 degrees. So that would be, you know, 45, times four, which would be kind of like a fourth order filter. And now starting here, I'm gonna sort of move this arrow around and see if I can find some place where there is a change of 180 degrees. So maybe about here, 154, 150, this region here. And now I'm wondering if I add another filter to my main speaker up here and tilt that whole thing down uh, 180 degrees around this region, will I get a better alignment? So let's try that. So I exported these measurements. I opened them up in Crosslight. And um, so I've got my sub on channel two, my main on channel one. And the only thing that I've changed is that I, I did put in a 60B attenuation on the sub like I was talking about earlier. And let me just, to give you your bearings, here's the same relationship, magnitude relationship we were looking at earlier. And I just put some markers here to identify our crossover region. And now let's try creating that phase shift. So should we look at phase or magnitude and phase? Maybe let's just focus on the phase for a second. So remember we've got main in red and sub in blue. And I'm going to insert a fourth order filter. So we're doubling down on filters. So this will be, you already put a fourth order filter. I'm adding another one on top of that. And what did I say? I think we said like 155 Hertz. And I'm going to insert that. And we see that we have, you know, a closer match on the phase relationship here. But it's, it was a little bit fast, right? So let me step this back. And I'll just slowly ramp this up 30, 40, 50. So you can see it change, right? I feel like this is a little bit more helpful than just inserting it right away. Okay, so we get to about 100. 160 and now I've created those 180 degrees of phase shift that I wanted in this area but now I'm still gonna need some delay to make this all work right so I might try ramping that up as well this would be a good time to uh, measure it but I don't want to move my cursors so um, I'll go ahead and move them though so we were looking at around 150, right? And I can see that I have a phase offset between those two of 116.8 degrees. And I can just automatically inset that here in the delay. And that creates a match there. but I think we can do a little bit better. Let's try a polarity inversion and do the same thing. Okay, this is starting to look better, right? So now we have a little bit better matching phase in this region. Um, and we're using a little bit less delay than before. And let's take a look at the magnitude now magnitude and let's look at the sum in between them now this is not as good as the sum that you came up with when you just used delay but this is just me sort of like testing some things and seeing if we can get this better um, 
Okay, so let me jump forward and look at another way that we could get that same 180 degrees of phase shift. So let's take off this delay. Let's take off this filter. Let's go back to just looking at the phase. And let's take off, let's just look at the individual elements again here for a second. And now, um, let me put my markers back to where they were because I thought that was helpful. Okay, so I'm looking at this region and I'm thinking about 180 degrees of phase shift around here. And so I know that I could do that with a fourth order filter or a second order all pass filter, right? So I've got one queued up here and we were thinking that it would be around 150 Hertz. And there we go. So we can see already here the slopes match a little bit better. It looks like I need a polarity inversion. And now I could sort of ramp this up and down, right? And, and try to optimize this a little bit better. Um, maybe add a little bit of gain, uh, sorry, a little bit of delay, 0 0.5 milliseconds. And I'll tell you, this is the best solution I've found so far to your situation. And I didn't come up with this all by myself. I took your measurements and I put them into the same subaligner, the same process that I use for all of the alignments in subaligner. Um, and what that does is it is it just tests a bunch of results for me. So it goes through all of these filters and tries them at um, a bunch of different frequencies and a bunch of different orders and gains and cues and all that stuff to just give me some things to start with. And so, you know, it came up with the Butterworth filter that we tried the fourth order. And it also told me about trying a couple of all pass filters. Um, so that's where I got those ideas besides just looking at the phase and, and trying to look for those patterns of 45 degrees. And I tried a few of these and I'll just show you in the memories here. Okay. Um, so taking a look at the crossover region here, this is just magnitude. So this green guy here this is the uh, fourth order Butterworth filter that we add. And you see that um, we lose some energy because we had to push it up so high. It has a pretty high um, cutoff frequency. So let's hide that one. And the ones that I feel like are left over competing are, um, what is this red one? Okay. Um, so I think maybe this red one was just with delay, but the most important thing I want to show you here is how I was able to get summation through the crossover region in pink here with the second order all pass filter. And I think um, blue is the first order all pass filter. So I'll hide that as well. And then the cool thing about the all pass filter is that we're, I was able to achieve these results without the um, any of the delay added. So it only improves the crossover alignment a little bit, a tiny little bit, as you can see here, if you're just looking at summation. Um, but it does give you a lead of, you know, 7.5 milliseconds of delay if that's important to you as well. So I don't know what's gonna be the best solution for you. You know, um, this is not a single point solution. You know, it has to do with how the system will be deployed um, as well as, I guess, you know, what content is going through it and therefore, how much delay is allowable. Like, you know, depending on how it's installed and what it's used for, you could have delay all day maybe and it wouldn't matter. But if you really do need to use a minimum amount of delay so you don't add that to the system on top of all the other places that you're getting delay from, then you might want to use an all pass filter instead. Okay, so if anyone is watching this who knows these boxes, um, I hope you'll comment on this video and make some suggestions for Kieran about how this can be improved. You know, I'm just sort of looking at the data here and playing with filters, but they're, you know, um, I don't, but I'm not super familiar with these boxes. Okay, so I hope that's helpful and um, yeah, let me know what you think.